Today we are taking a look at the Sapphire Nitro Radeon RX 470 8GB and the Sapphire Nitro Radeon RX 460 4GB versions. But are they any good? Stick around and find out. You can see the unboxing videos that we have produced above and below, but there is not really all that much you can talk about as far as visuals go on graphics cards. But then again that gives us the opportunity to delve deeper into the specs and performance side of the product. But we really can't help ourselves with including some nice b-roll and for that we need some audio to go with it to accompany the visuals on the screen and let's describe the RX 460 and 470 in some detail as far as the design goes. The Sapphire Nitro RX 460 has an aggressive looking nitro cooler and dual 90mm fans. The back of the card has some nitro branding which is a nice touch on a cheaper graphics card. And as far as I.O. one display port, one HDMI and one DVI port are provided for connectivity. The custom designed RX 460 from Sapphire also uses a 6 pin PCIe power connector. While from the top of the graphics card we can see some Sapphire branding and nice silver and black accents. The nitro cooler on the RX 470 has dual ball bearing fans that have an 85% longer life compared to ordinary fans. The two 95mm fans are dust repelling and provide better cooling that is also quieter. The Nitro RX 470 has the same dual X cooler that is also featured on the higher end RX 480. The intelligent fan control 3 system keeps the Nitro 470 completely silent during idle and light loads and the card runs cool enough to be passively cooled resulting in total silence while not gaming. Additionally being that this is a 2016 release of the RX 470 we can't do without any LEDs. Sapphire has deployed Nitro Glow onto the Nitro RX 470 which can be customized through Sapphire's overclocking software Trix 3.0. Additionally we can change the color through the hardware with a physical red button on the back of the Nitro RX 470 where also the dual BIOS button is located. Given that the 470 is targeted towards VR not that much for esports gamers for who the RX 460 is targeted, Sapphire has provided two HDMI ports alongside two DisplayPort outputs so you can have a TV and a VR headset connected at once. Neither of them come close to the Titan X for example, but that is not really their goal. They are meant for 80% of the users, 80% of the gamers who prefer to play League of Legends, Overwatch, Counter-Strike, Global Offensive, Dota 2 and don't really feel the need to have all the settings turned up to the max. They are meant for gamers who use one monitor that is 1080p or 1440p, not 4K and maybe has 144 Hz but not much beyond that. And to drive these resolutions at a respectable frame rate and with decent graphics you don't really need the Titan X. All you need are the RX 460 and 470 respectively. Onto the benchmarks themselves. In Far Cry Primal we measured 47 minimum FPS on the Sapphire Nitro RX 470 and 59 average FPS while on 460 we had 25 minimum and 31 average FPS. In Overwatch the latter so the 460 got 66 average FPS and 53 minimum FPS while the 470 got 76 and 61 minimum. The trend continues with Dota 2 where the RX 460 got 118 average and 75 minimum FPS. The 470 on the other hand got 155 and 87 minimum FPS. All that while not going above delta T of 51 degrees for the RX 460 and delta T of 50 for the RX 470. The latter number means that the ambient temperature in the room is counted out of the equation so let's say for example we had 22 degrees celsius in the room while doing the benchmark the sapphire rx 460 it never got above 73 degrees celsius that is of course under full sustained load while doing synthetic benchmarks and actual temperatures while in normal gaming mode are lower. In idle both the graphics cards perform admirably with a delta T of only 3.5 degrees on 460 and 7.8 degrees on the RX 470. 
The 4GB version of the RX 470 is priced at around 250 euros, while the RX 460 is priced at around 140. The first one so beats the original AMD marketed pricing of $199 for the RX 480, while it's only a 470. And that is why you can find a lot of conflicting reports on the internet regarding the price per performance of the different AMD models. Some of the journalists are using the suggested MSRP as their base in the pricing of the product, while the others are using the actual numbers that are present on the market today. And if you look at the latter, the RX 460 beats the RX 470 hands down, because the difference is almost 100% in price, while in performance it's not really all that different, especially if you are playing at full HD resolutions. So even though the RX 470 has a really nice backplate and looks proper good, I would recommend to you that you either jump one level up to the RX 480, or downgrade to the RX 460 and save quite a bit of cash and maybe upgrade your RAM or your SSD. Thank you for watching this comparison review on Discharge Networks, don't forget to comment and subscribe.